we're standing at the Red Rock Canyon State Park. We are investigating the Dove Spring Formation, which is behind me. You are seeing much of the sandstone and mudstones uh, in the Dove Spring Formation that are known to produce wonderful fossils from about 12 million to 8 million years of age. The quarry has already produced uh, one of the saber-toothed cat called Nimravides that is a primitive saber tooth that actually uh, originated either here or in Eurasia. This is a very important site. The Natural History Museum has been coming to this place for almost a hundred years. This place has been visited by geologists for a long, long time and paleontologists. All the work that they have done has accumulated in notebooks and in scientific publications. So when you come out here for the first time, you benefit from having read all that accumulated knowledge, so knowledge grows. The environment here was much larger. We have rivers that meandering around in here, and we have small lakes, and we have small pond. We envision that this place actually has a really good vegetation that will support animals that are browsing on tree leaves along river banks and also running animals uh, such as the pronghorn antelope that are adapted to the open terrains. So it's a, it's a wonderful environment. In between the sedimentation, we have volcanic rocks that poured on from uh, nearby volcanic eruptions. The volcano exploded, shot ash uh, in the sky that got carried uh, some significant distance. They've done some correlation work to place sources in the southern Nevada volcanic field. During the Miocene, there was huge volcanism throughout the, the region, and we find a lot of these ashes throughout this section. The volcanic uh, material uh, gave us two major information. One, that uh, they allow us to date it using radioisotopic age methodology. We can look at the uranium and the argon uh, rich chemistry and then to get the age estimate. Uh, so we're trying to get a new radiometric date on the section so that we know uh, when this was deposited. And ash is really good because it gives us a, a primary date, whereas everything else is like a quantitative date. Whereas um, looking at fossils, looking at what's stacked on top of each other, those are relative dating methods. Uh, this will be absolute. And this is particularly interesting because the last date was collected in um, 1986, and it was using an older method called fission track dating. So now we're trying to use a method called argon-argon dating, uh, which is more precise. There are a number of geochemical tests now, including new forms of oxygen isotope, the, clump, the various clumped isotope methods that are now able to look at precipitation value, estimate precipitation regimes, and even estimate paleo temperatures. And when the first season we were here, we were finding very little carbonate in the sequence. Now we're finding it in lots of places. Looking at the hillside, it looks like a sequence of floodplain deposits. And there's clearly some subtle but very odd differentiation among sort of half meter units up and down this hillside. What I will do when I hack into it somewhere else is look for signs of original bedding, signs of carbonate nodule, signs of root cast to see whether there's paleosol development on any of these primary sediments. This is a geological formation. The formation contains volcanic flows, like basalts, and eruption sequence, and also lots of sediments that actually preserve a fabulous record of the fossils that we're searching for.